So this is going to be, I believe, number 15, lesson 15, and this is going to be the apple. The apple done in primary colors. Here is one of the examples that I did last year when I taught this lesson. Can you see this? And hopefully, I don't know, can you see that it's done in only three colors? Right? There's green in here, orange, other colors. We do those by blending. And we're going to go through this as a lesson. This will take a little bit of time. I want you to start here. I don't know if you can see this, but I've sketched the apple um, in yellow. So you're going to sketch it in yellow. I can hand this around. Um, we're going to sketch the whole apple in yellow. Leave this spot white where it is white in your handout. The highlight, leave, leave white white. It, a colored pencil, as you guys probably know, doesn't erase particularly well. So leave the white white. So I will show this around. This is this is what you're going to do in yellow. See, that shift the whole thing. Well, I actually care for trace, tracing it and represent it. I do want it large. I do want your drawing to be large. So, see what I mean? Sketch the thing in yellow. Just rough, rough it out. Yeah, it's very nice. So rough the whole thing up in yellow. Yep. So we are learning how to use primary colors. We are not using any colors that are not primary colors. And I'm just going to put this up here so I can see it. I'm going to sketch it in yellow. And once you kind of have that outline done in yellow, we are going to move toward this, actually. So you can kind of see this. I'm going to do some lines in the indigo to give it structure. So that's that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to build it up. So this is, I've, I've actually saved these done at different points. Probably won't get done with this today. This is a two-day lesson. So I've kind of got it stru st structured. Uh, sketched out, and this is, like I said, this is a reference I'm using uh, from my efforts last year. We're going to use our indigo to give ourselves dark lines. Indigo is going to be the main part of your shade color, and it will take your reds and make them much darker red without actually going quite as purple as you'd think. I don't know if I like the shape of this apple, but that's okay. Huh? So I'm just going to lightly do, do the kind of the structure here. I probably should have put this a little higher, but that's okay. Well, y this is really done for the people at home more. Um, so what we're doing, once you've got it sketched out in, in yellow, then we're going to just do some of the darker lines. Anywhere that's dark, you kind of go over that with your indigo and give yourself some basic structure around it. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm going to shade the bottom of it um, with, here, so okay, so pay attention here. We have three pri primary colors and they are three different shades. We have the blue or the indigo, which, which creates the darkest shade. Yellow is the lightest, right? And, and red's in the middle, middle. If you have an area of your apple that you want, or the shadow, that you want to be dark, use your darkest shade color, your darkest hue first, the darkest value hue, which would be blue. So I'm going to be using blue down here, or indigo, I should say, first, and then layering up on that. I don't want that in here because I want that to be medium. But down here, I want that to be dark. So we are making that sphere shape with shading, just like we talked about when we had our ball. I'll put that on the screen here, too. So if I were to do this in the colors, this would be blue down where it's dark. This would be my indigo down here. And it would fade to bright, you know, white, and then yellow. And then does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Thank you. So shade with the indigo first.
What's that? Indigo is an excellent shade shade uh, color. Anything that's, like I said, anything that's going to be really dark, you're going to want to have indigo in that anyway. So go ahead and just go over that with some indigo. The indigo does not make the nicer green color. You're going to use a little blue for the green color mixed with yellow. And I should let you guys know that the reason why I have you do this in primary colors and not try to pick the specific colors that you want is because as an artist, you often don't actually have the, the exact color you want. You have to blend it and mix it. So whether that's in, in paints or pastels especially or um, anything else. So I want to teach you how to blend colors or at least have you practice it. Sharpen some pencils here. Before I get into red, I'm going to take my yellow, light yellow, I'm going to go up to over the top where this would be, light yellow over in here, leaving the middle that section white, I'm going to fade through here, and then I'm going to be using dark yellow too. So I'm going to do light yellow to dark yellow, but leaving this spot in here white. small stem for the size of the apple. I might need to make that a little bigger. So I did the dark yellow, going to do the, uh, sorry, the light yellow, and now I'm going to do the darker yellow a little bit. this a little bigger. The branch just a little bigger there. So medium yellow or the, the uh, darker yellow. I'm also always trying to go that direction of the apple. Sketch the apple in yellow first. Good. And then where it's shaded, do it in indigo. Yeah, where it's dark, just draw it in, in indigo where it's dark. So like the apple down here. Well, so this is that shade, right, down there. And I am going to shade that part of the apple down here. I'm going to widen this apple just a little bit. Now, the reason why we want to go dark where it's going to be darkest is because the, the colors uh, yeah, and they're, they're, I plugged that one in over there. So the colors will, the, the paper will stop you from taking so much, um, it, it only can take so much colored pencil. red on top of that indigo down there. It will go kind of a purplish color. Oh, great. Broken. And as I have in this this ex example here, kind of layer and do sh shades, and then you're going to go over it and over it. 
and eventually you'll get it to be looking like the, this one up here or this other one.
So I'm building up shading. So right down here in the bottom, it's kind of a nondescript color, but it's actually rather purple. That layer of red and indigo creates a very purple color. But it, in the shadow, I find it does look very, um, it does look very shaded. It doesn't actually end up looking as purple as you'd think. And if a thing, something looks too purple, what color can you add to make it look less purple and more neutral or brown? You guys know? Exact opposite color on the color wheel is a correct answer. What is opposite of purple? So purple is a secondary color. If you're going to pick the opposite, it's going to be a primary color that does not have those two components which make the secondary color. Correct, it would be yellow because purple is made from what two colors? Red and blue. So the, the remaining primary color would be yellow and that is the opposite. So if something looks too red, what's the opposite color of red? Green, because it's the secondary color which is made up of the other two primary colors that are not that. So if I have something that's too, too um, red in my apple here, and I'm only using primary colors, what colors can I add? Green, so blue and yellow. If it's too yellow, if it's too yellow you add a little bit of blue and a little bit of, of red to make it a darker looking yellow. Uh, and very, very lightly. So you want to just very, very, very light, layer them on very uh, lightly. Probably in this case, you probably want to start with your red, just a little, little red. And if it's too orange then, then you add your blue, okay? But go slowly on, on that because yellow, if, if you're wanting it to be pretty bright still, those two colors can really um, overpower. That's a good question. Oh, I wouldn't doubt it. So now I've got kind of a pink. If you're, if you're looking too pink, you're, you don't want your red to be darker, but you don't want it to be pink. It ends up, you kind of want to go orange. So that's why I'm going to take my dark yellow and I'm going to layer that up on top of that pink color and hopefully make it look less pink. So it's not a pink apple, it's kind of that, um, yeah. Hopefully this gets us thinking about color a little differently. And for these green, green uh, textures, the green stripes, I'm going to use a true blue, not the indigo. It's really what I have the true blue here for. You are being recorded right now to say. And it doesn't have to look good to get a good grade. So if you've done your best and you need to stop, you can, you can do that. You can stop and you've done your best. Just don't, uh, just keep, keep whatever it is. So don't throw away your, your effort. Uh, just make sure it stays in your portfolio that gets graded. But uh, don't stress about it looking just perfect. You're, you're, doing, you're doing just fine. Like I said, I'm going to put some true blue in here. I don't want there to be this to look brown. If your blue goes over your your orange, it will end up looking brown. So you want to be careful with your green to create your green color, and just hit it. Just have those places where it's going to be uh, just yellow to add the blue, so it will look have that um, green look. 
Otherwise, if you put it on top of your red and your, your orange colors, it will look brown. Because that is literally how we create brown. What's that? Um, in a manner of speaking, sure. Uh, but what we end up create, we, we kind of think of brown in a lot of different ways. Um, so yeah, it is, you know, technically it's a dark yellow, right? But in, in practice, it's a mix of all of those different colors that just get it dark enough that it looks, looks like that. Slowly and surely, it's coming together here. Yeah, clean, clean up time. Put that aside. Just stop the class right there, and this is part one. We'll finish it up next time. Thank you.